So, road lighting. What is a road lighting? I'm sure all of you knows what is a road and what is a road lighting. If you are an, uh, if you're not a driver yet, you might not appreciate road lighting yet. But if you are a driver and you drive on the night, I'm sure you will either hate the road lighting or appreciate the road lighting or you don't care anymore because you don't understand what is wrong with the road lighting. But if you are a, a lighting designer and you are a driver as well and you are in the road during the night time, you will immediately appreciate and criticize road lighting. Either it will help you or guide you in your driving or uh, uh, not help you anymore. Like too much glare or it's too dark on some side or it's dangerous and there's no light on that part. So yes, uh, road lighting is critical. Okay, so let's go uh, check this one. If you want to do a road lighting calculation, you need to uh, know a lot of things like this one. I have five here. I summarized it into five only. So the first one you need to know is what type of the road, okay? If your client don't know what is the M4 or M3 because Maybe you're talking to your client and then the guy said, can you please, uh, I have a road lighting project. I want to do the lighting for this one and blah, blah, blah. And then you will immediately said or ask, okay, boss, what is the type of road light uh, of that road? Is it M4 or M3 or M2? Of course, your client will definitely say, what are you talking about? Because they don't know these codes. So you need to ask the very common questions. For example, the speed. Is it for a highway, a major road, a collector road, a boulevard maybe, or an internal road for a residential road only, or maybe a commercial area? So how many lanes? And a lot of things like what is the asphalt? Is it light color or dark color? Because the asphalt or the road type material will also affect your lighting calculation. If you have a brick road, Again, it's different. So the light, the 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 reflectance factor of the road is like a little darker because it's brick, bricks or maybe stone. So it's different. So it depends on what type of materials of that road is, what is the speed, or how many lanes. So these are the common questions that you can ask to your client. And of course, these clients or this uh, building official will definitely answer you because these are the common question. So please don't ask them what is that type. Is it M4 or M3 or M2 or M1? <laughs> okay. So next, uh, road buildup. If that road has a pathwalk, do you want to highlight also the pathwalk or you're, you want to highlight only uh, the road? Uh, is there a median or the middle island? Is there is there an emergency lane or lay-by? Are there any grass on the sides or maybe in the middle? So you need to ask those questions. If the client has a drawing, good, but you really need to go to the site and check if whatever on the drawing is there in the site. Because sometimes the drawing is very old drawing or maybe the civil engineer did not include the pathwalk and the grass strip. And in the actual there is. So you need to double check that one in the site on the, or in the actual situation. All right. So next is what type of the luminary you will use. Sometimes you will just run a calculation using your product maybe. But the building official said that I have this specific luminaire and I want LED and I want this one, blah, 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 blah. So you need to ask them also. If they don't know anything about road luminaire, then you can suggest your own because there are lots of different optics for road lighting. I think I need to discuss that one. Okay, just go to the Udemy course and I will discuss all those uh, beam optics for road because there is optic for uh, narrow road or for wide road or for, yeah, there are so many, many different optics for road lighting. And then you need to ask also the pole details. Is that pole a very decorative pole or just a simple uh, papered galvanized a metal pole or is it a wooden pole so what kind of pole what height of the pole is there a bracket or is it what so you need to ask for the pole details if the client don't know 
I uh, don't know yet the poll details, then you can suggest your own based on your calculation. And then the last one is restrictions. So this is sometimes not uh, discussed, but but uh, this is very important. For example, your road lighting or your road project is close to the airport. What will be the restriction of your road lighting? Can you please tell me? Whoever can answer will have a 70% off in my next training. <laughs> in my next training, can you please answer me? If your road lighting project is close to the airport, what will be? Ooh, Eel said glare factor. Uh, Eel, it's, it's, yes, maybe it's a good consideration. Light pollution. Neymeo said flooding. Yeah, light pollution might be the uh, answer also, but not the correct one. Martin said lighting pollution or light pollution. Uh, who else? Paula said glare. It's G4. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, your answers, glare and light pollution and um, flooding are maybe the restrictions. But actually, in all road lighting, that is a requirement. It should not be glary. You should not steal light on the roadside, especially if it's a residential area. So none of you got the answer. How about Tiha? Tiha, maybe you want to answer. Manuel? Uh, Lamiat? Faisal? I will answer your question later. Faisal said standard, standard like M1 or else. Uh, no, we are referring with the airport restriction, so no, not M1, because M1 is about the road type. Oh, Lamiat, Lamiat just left. Okay, Lamiat, if you don't want to answer, it's okay, don't left. <laughs> Mikhail, maybe you want to answer? You will have a 70% off the next training if you answer it correctly. What would be the restriction for road lighting if you are close to the airport? Height restrictions. Yeah. Height? Yeah, you said height. Oh my god. You are correct. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I will unmute you now. I please remind me with your 70% off discount for the next training if you want to attend to the next trainings. Uh correct. The correct answer is the height, pole height restriction. Oh, Neymeyo also said full height. Uh, Neymeyo already late. Iyal already said it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, the height restriction because if it's close to the airport, your pole height should not be that tall. Otherwise, what will happen? I don't know what will happen, but they have always the restriction of the height, especially the buildings, the light poles, the transmission towers for electricity and other things so if it's close to the airport yeah height is very limited very good okay yeah so if you're working in a road lighting project ask the client boss is it close to the airport or do you have any other restrictions um, if the client said no I don't have or yes I do have yes so you need to put that in your notes because it's very important right so next what do I have here so I'm showing you this uh, dialogue C go street uh, road lighting we will do that one later as an exercise all right so road classification there is what we call m1 m2 yes um, these are all these codes are based on CBT. some are from British standard and some are from other European standards so for example, here in lighting guide, these are the standards that you can follow or you can read for road lighting. So LG6 and then the code practice for road lighting, which is the BS5489-2003. Uh, uh, this is for the British standards. There are others also uh, in UA, US. There's also from UAE, they have their own uh, government road lighting guidelines. So if it's a local project, you need to check the local standards. If it's 
of course, if it, even if it's international, you still need to look for the local standards. Maybe they have other restrictions or they have some local ordinance codes that you need to follow, especially if it's inside the city or within the city. Okay, uh, especially the zoning, especially the zoning. If you are working with the LEED certification project also, or even not, if it's in the U.S., they have this zone one, zone two, zone three. So uh, the light value or light requirements for different zones has uh, different values. Like maybe in zone one, zone one, zone one is uh, I think in the industrial uh, agricultural part, and zone four is highly commercialized. So the lax value for these different zones has uh, differs or varies differently. Okay, you can read the LG guide if you want to pursue your or become an expert in road lighting design. Next, uh, yes, this is also from the guide, uh, lighting guide handbook of phone lighting. So this, for example, this CEO, CE1, CE2 to 5, or S1, S2 up to S6, they have their requirements here and there. And the meaning of that for the CE, this class is intended for users of motorized vehicles in conflict areas such as road intersections, roundabouts, etc. So these areas also allow provisions for cyclists and pedestrians. So if you're working with a roundabout or road intersections, go for the CE requirements. If it's high requirements, 50 lux. If it's not that much, then 50 lux. You need to check that one and if you want to check that one in dialogue let go let's go and check it if we can see the CO here here so uh, let's bring this one up uh, right now it's in uh, m4 but if you pull up the lever of this uh, dialogue you can find on the top there's a co c1 2 3 and 4 so if you're working with an intersection or roundabout, go and check this one. Unfortunately, I don't know how are you going to use this one. Let me go and check. For example, I want the C1. Oh, see? Now, when I change the C1, the requirements becomes different. It only requires the EM and overall uniformity. And I failed to the EM because I only have 11 locks. The requirements is 30 locks. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's how you will find this in your calculation. And then if it's S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the meaning of that S is this class is intended for cyclists and pedestrians on footpaths, cycle paths, residential roads, pedestrian streets, parking areas. All right, parking areas. So the S class and the A class are similar situation, but S, okay. So let's go. And for example, I want the S1. So S1 requires 15 locks to 22 locks. And the minimum should be 5 locks. Let's go and try it in Dialoxivo. If Let's just imagine that this uh, file is for residential. I will try the S1. Uh, where's my S1? No, I don't have the S1 here. Problem, I don't have S1. Okay, so it's not here in this standard. I think in this case is the P. Okay, Paula, let's check. P. Uh, okay, maybe this handbook is very old. Correct. So let's try the P instead of S. Yes. Let's go and check, for example, P3. What will happen to the requirements? Yeah. Okay. I achieve everything. And you can see the requirements is only about EM and minimum. This is what, uh, what, oh, Paula, you're great. Yes, you're right. So because it mentions about the minimum and also the lax value requirements. And again, you can double check that one in Dialax. And it's also mentioned about the minimum only here and also the lax value. Perfect. Thank you, Paula. Okay, <laughs> next. Uh, yes, so we're done with these standards. Okay, so let's go now. So these are the luminaires used for, for a road lighting. And yes, most of the time it has bracket. Sometimes it's catenary. 
the word the word the word is catenary suspended some are bollard type this is one of the best product of thorn lighting it's used for bridge lighting and road uh, close to the airport yes this is the solution and we installed one here in uh, we installed a lot of this kind of bollards for road lighting in uh, uae also in the middle east it's also possible for ramp and tunnels okay i'm not plugging that one and you can also have some suspended luminaires that is for road lighting okay so either post stamp bracket type like this one double bracket or single bracket a decorative one like that or suspended one like this or catenary yeah these are the types of luminaires for road lighting okay so let's go now and do some exercise we still have time all right i have one exercise here let's do it and i will show you how we will do it 